Back in the early days of PSVR 1, VR experiences were everywhere. Manifest 99, Blindfold, Kingdom Hearts, Richie's Plank, Nightfall, The Bellows, Planet of the Apes, Ocean's Descent. They all have varying runtimes and a varying amount of actual gameplay, but they all get lumped together as VR experiences. And there were so many of them that at a certain point, the term experience became something that a lot of us who were desperate for full length games started to despise hearing. Since then though, something interesting's happened. VR games started getting longer, not flat screen game long, but more often than not, they're five, 10, 15 hours long. So when a game comes along touting itself as an experience with a 90 minute runtime, I've got to admit that I do get a little nostalgic. As much as the utility room feels like an experience, the term walking sim might fit it even better, as there's almost nothing to do here other than a lot of walking and a lot of platforming. But I might be getting ahead of myself a bit. The utility room starts off telling you that you're going behind the scenes of the universe, the place that keeps our existence stable, and that there hasn't been a work incident in 13.8 billion years, reminding you not to do anything foolish. Using this language feels, I don't know, funny, I guess. Talking about the universe as if it's some kind of factory that adheres to some OSHA guidelines feels straight out of a Douglas Adams book. Something I really appreciate. And then you see your own face, which is essentially a set of Groucho Marx glasses, minus the mustache. And listen, I'm the last guy who should be commenting on whether something is funny or not, so you tell me. But here we are magically transported to this black and white, almost alien world that hinges on the player ooing and eyeing at the sense of scale at the otherworldly landscapes. And right off the bat, I'm confused by the tone. Outside of your own shadow that keeps being projected up against the walls, nothing else on this adventure makes me think it's supposed to be funny. So it's a strange way to kick things off. Overall though, I do like the look of this place. I can ignore the repeating textures everywhere when I'm getting true blacks from the PSVR 2's OLED panel. I can ignore the cave environments that wear out their welcome within minutes, because soon enough, they're replaced with massive automated warehouses with some pretty impressive draw distances. In fact, the utility room makes sure to keep things interesting. Just when you start getting bored of one environment, you'll suddenly be somewhere else. You're left feeling alone and vulnerable, never really knowing how much danger you're actually in, constantly wondering what's around the next corner. The sense of scale when a giant Easter Island head floats by, or, or when you have a giant umbilical pendulum swinging in front of you connected to, who knows what, miles above your head. It's all really impressive and definitely not sights you're likely to have seen anywhere else. And you'll probably never hear me say this about any other game ever, but I almost wish the walking speed was slower, just to force me to take in the sights even more than I did. And when I slowed myself down, I not only appreciated the world more, I appreciated its sound more too. You're definitely going to want to put on some headphones and blast the audio, because most of the soundtrack consists of low, ambient rumbles. But when strange situations arise, the audio reflects that too. Something I just can't ignore though are the inconsistent frame rates. If you use smooth turning like I do, you'll notice this stutter sooner than everyone else, but it does kick in for everyone eventually. And the way the scene fades to black and the sound cutouts completely between sections makes the adventure feel like a bunch of smaller areas rather than one big epic world. I get that these are minor complaints, but now that I'm done playing, they do affect what I think of the utility room as a whole and kind of tarnish the whole experience. The controls are pretty basic, but even these could have used some refinement. Like I said earlier, the walk speed seems a bit too fast for this kind of experience. And part of that is because the controls are a bit too sensitive when you're jumping from platform to platform. In fact, I get tired of falling into the abyss, and so I end up using teleportation a lot. And I hate teleportation. It kills the immersion. And actually, you can't even turn off teleportation. I guarantee you, you'll accidentally hit that right thumbstick too when you least expect it. And when it comes to climbing, don't listen, it's just weird that it's even here. Trying to climb anything gets you nowhere, until the one climbing wall that's shoehorned into the later part of the game. You've got a standard jump that you can do but just by hitting a button, or a much bigger jump that you can do by holding down the triggers and swinging your arms. And really, neither feel great to use. I don't know, there's just so many good ideas in the utility room that, that just don't come together the way that they should, and it's actually a little frustrating. There are three options when starting a new game, but most gamers will want to choose Extended. 
The others ditch certain chapters and gameplay elements, making an already short game even shorter. My first time through Extended took just over an hour, which is about 30 minutes less than expected. But there is some replayability here. There are collectibles to find the Platinum Trophy in a whole separate 10 minute section to explore called the Exhibition, which feels like a photogrammetry experiment gone wrong and someone just said, hey, that looks fucked up, let's keep it in. The utility room is exactly the kind of artistic PSVR 2 experience I was looking for, but it arrives without the polish that it needed. The world it creates is the kind of insanity that the Twilight Zone VR was after, and I'd argue that the audience for both experiences are the same, with the utility room being better in practically every regard. And even with the short runtime, frame rate issues, smooth turning issues, shoehorn climbing mechanics, slippery controls, and some unpolished environments you visit briefly later in the game, it feels like something you should play just because you should experience it. But not now. Unless it gets the patches that it needs, you should just wait for a sale.